What's for Fika, episode one. Hey everyone, my name is Nia Aronson and I work here at Food to Do in the test kitchen as a recipe developer and a content creator, which is why I'm here hosting this brand new series called What's for Fika that me, my producer Monique, and so many other people have been working so hard to get going. I originally thought of this idea because I'm from Sweden and I just love Fika. If you're unfamiliar with Fika, it's pretty much like an organized snack time around 11 a.m. and also around 3 p.m. Usually you have it with your friends, your family, your coworkers, really whoever you're around at the time. And throughout the series, you're hopefully gonna learn a little bit more about what Fika is all about, and I'm gonna teach you how to make both traditional and non-traditional Swedish recipes. And today we're gonna start off strong with a recipe that I feel like so many of my friends at least are very familiar with here, and make cardamom buns. So I'm gonna walk you through a few of the ingredients that we have, and this is not everything we're gonna use because we're also gonna make a filling later and also a simple syrup and also some cardamom sugar, but it's pretty much just a repeat of all the ingredients that we already have here. So I have a bunch of all-purpose flour, I have an egg, I have a little bit of granulated sugar, I have cardamom, active dry yeast, like the star of the show, I feel like besides the cardamom, and some butter, salt, and then also some whole milk. I have the stand mixer here with the dough hook attachment. Very important that you have the dough hook. It's really hard to make any kind of dough or like bread dough or yeast dough with a paddle or any other type of like whisk or something. You don't even want to try that. First thing I'm going to do is actually heat up the milk. So I have whole milk here. I've actually read that some people use skim milk in cardamom buns. I feel like I might need to fact check that, but that's okay. Wait. Would that, would that be bad? <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, I feel like I feel like that's right. I feel like I was reading so many recipes before I developed this, so I feel like there's so much random information in my head right now. But I'm gonna heat this also with the sugar as well. I'm gonna heat this up until it's about 97, 98 degrees Fahrenheit. It should be about body temperature. It's really important that you don't let the milk get too hot because then it's gonna kill the yeast and then you're not gonna get any rise of the dough and then, yeah, that just sucks. I've definitely done that. Just in case, you could, if you don't have a thermometer, you could just use your fingers and you could kind of feel it and see if it feels like body temperature. But if not, if you have one of these, you can just use it and double check. It's still only at like 73. So this is active dry yeast. If you have instant yeast too, that's also totally fine. Usually it's about a one-to-one -one ratio. The only difference is that with instant yeast, you don't actually have to activate it, so you could just add all the ingredients to the bowl at once. Even when I use instant yeast, I usually tend to activate it just in case. If you don't want to, just make sure that the milk isn't too cold because, I don't know, I feel like you at least want to use room temperature milk in that case. So usually the weight of the yeast is about one to 2% of the weight of the flour. I'm using a little bit extra yeast in this recipe and that's because cardamom and cinnamon actually both have kind of antifungal properties, which can kind of prevent the yeast from really working. So it can handle a little extra yeast in this case. So now that the milk has cooled down to about 98 degrees, I'm gonna pour it into the bowl with yeast. Any sugar that's left in the bowl too, because sometimes that doesn't have time to actually dissolve. Now I'm just giving this a stir and I'm gonna let it sit for about five minutes until the yeast has started to kind of dissolve and some small foam bubbles have started to be on the top. That means that it's kind of activated. So that's what we wanna look for. You know, I feel like people say, like obviously I just said to look for bubbles, but honestly the bubbles are so small. I feel like it looks more like, like a slight foam. <laughs> Wait, when did you first make these? For the first time? For the first time, oh my god, I can't remember. I feel like I didn't used to make specifically cardamom buns that much growing up, but I would make cinnamon buns with my grandma a lot, and then she would put cardamom in them as well. So it'd kind of be like a cross. But so long ago, I feel like. Now I'm gonna add all purpose flour. So this is pre-ground cardamom. We actually ground this earlier in the test kitchen with a mortar and pestle. I would recommend doing that rather than buying pre-ground. You're just gonna get so much more cardamom flavor. It's gonna be a lot more fragrant and a lot deeper in my opinion. I'm gonna add it right into the bowl along with a little bit of kosher salt. And I'm gonna add some butter. It's important that the butter is actually at room temperature. Otherwise, it's gonna take a very long time for it to actually mix into the rest of the ingredients. 
I would say the majority of cardamom bun recipes you see online won't have an egg in them. But I really wanted these cardamom buns to be a little bit softer and a little bit fluffier, so that's why I'm adding an egg. If you don't wanna add an egg, you don't have to. It's not gonna make a huge difference. Your cardamom buns are gonna be a little bit denser, if that makes sense, still delicious. So it's kind of up to preference, but yeah, I'm going with an egg here. Adding the dough hook, but I'm gonna let this run for about 20 minutes almost, like 15 to 20 minutes until the dough is super, super tacky and smooth. And then we're gonna stop it and we're gonna do a little window paint test to make sure that it's done. Um, depending on your mixer and how old it is and what type you use, you might have to even knead it for longer. You might also only have to knead it for 10 minutes. So kind of like assess your mixer and just check it after 10. And if you have to keep going, then just keep going. Okay, I'm gonna turn this up to like medium high speed and let this run for a bit and I will see you in like 20 minutes. Okay, let's check out the dough. All right, so to do the window pane test, if you don't know how to do it already, I honestly didn't know what the window pane test was until like two years ago, which is embarrassing because I have always loved to bake, but you grab a piece of the dough and it's gonna be a little bit sticky and a little bit tacky. So to do the window pane test, you grab a little piece of dough and you kind of just gently stretch it between your fingers. If it breaks right away or really easily, you wanna mix it for a little bit longer. But if you're able to kind of pull it until you see some light behind it, then, damn, it keeps breaking. Then it's good to go. And that just means the gluten has had time to really form and it's gonna yield a really soft and tender bun. I'll grab some plastic wrap. Don't mind me. Can I? <laughs> Bring this up. <laughs> so I'm gonna add plastic wrap here. You can add a kitchen towel, but I like to use plastic wrap because I find that it doesn't leave a kind of like skin on the dough after it's risen. Sometimes if you just add a towel, it can almost dry out the dough. It's so annoying when you're trying to knead it back together and you have like a skin that you have to try to incorporate. So this is gonna help it from drying out. And I also love to see how sometimes after it's risen, you almost get this like bubble on top. So I'm gonna put this aside to rest, and in the meantime, I'm gonna make the filling, which is gonna be a butter sugar filling and also a cardamom sugar, which is gonna be really good. Now I'm gonna make the filling, and the filling is pretty much two parts. So there's a cardamom sugar, and then there's also a butter sugar mixture. I do this because I feel like it's the traditional way to do it. I saw a lot of videos online doing it. Fabrique, my favorite bakery in New York City, does it this way. And it also just adds like an extra layer of sweetness to the buns. So here I have some very softened butter, a decent amount of granulated white sugar. You want it to be pretty soft because I'm gonna go in with a spatula and just mix it up. And you know what, as I'm saying that, I'm realizing this could be a little bit softer, but that's okay. The softer the butter is, the easier it's gonna be to mix. I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla as well and a generous pinch of salt because this is unsalted butter. If I was in Sweden, I would be using vanilla sugar, which is pretty much like powdered sugar with vanilla bean in it. And it's the most common form of vanilla in Sweden. Every time I go back, I try to bring some home. And actually my aunt and my grandma were just visiting me in New York a few weeks ago and they did bring me some. And I kept looking at it all week being like, I'm gonna bring it in for the video. And then I just completely forgot, of course, but maybe next time. This is good. I'm gonna put this aside and I'm gonna make the cardamom sugar. For the cardamom sugar, it's really just granulated white sugar and also pre-ground cardamom. Again, like before, we ground this up ourselves earlier. It's gonna add so much more flavor than if you buy it at the store. And now I'm just gonna go in and kind of rub it between my hands. And this is just gonna kind of infuse the sugar with the cardamom. Kind of like when you make like a zesty sugar, it's kind of doing the same thing. It's just bringing out even more of that flavor. The cardamom smells so strong, but very nice. You can see here that there are some bigger pieces and I really like that because then, not that you get like a crunch when you bite into the cardamom bun, but there's some kind of like texture variation, which is nice. Now that the fillings are done, we're gonna move on to actually assembling the buns, which is the best part in my opinion. So here is the proof dough. I actually have a swap that we made because it's just gonna take too long otherwise. But you can see it's very well risen. 
and I love that there are different kind of sizes of the cardamom seeds. And then I actually also gathered a few more things that we're gonna need. So obviously I have the fillings and then I have an egg wash and then rolling pin, obviously we need that. Um, some parchment paper, a offset spatula to spread the filling out and then a ruler and this little fancy looking pizza slicer. I'm gonna start off by just lightly dusting this work surface. And because the dough is pretty sticky and tacky, it's totally fine to be adding a bit more flour here too. And I'm gonna pat it into kind of a rectangle to start. Now I'm gonna roll it into a rectangle that's, when you're rolling dough out like this, it kind of automatically wants to turn into an oval. So I like to go into the corners and kind of pull like this to stretch it out. And I also like to just take the rolling pin and just go into the corners too. Yeah, you wanna make sure to keep that kind of rectangle intact. I'm gonna add a little bit more flour too. When I was developing this cardamom bun recipe, or I will say when I was learning how to make cardamom buns, this was the part that I was struggling with the most. I watched so many YouTube videos, I watched so many TikTok videos on how to fold the perfect cardamom bun, and it was only after like the fifth try that I got it right, so. Okay, that's good. Now I'm gonna go in with the butter sugar mixture and I'm just gonna spread the sugar butter all over kind of out into the corners. It can be kind of tedious, but really make sure that you're getting it all the way to the edge. Now I'm gonna sprinkle over the cardamom sugar and I'm gonna make sure to save a little bit for later because I'm gonna use some of it to sprinkle on top right before serving. So I'm just gonna take a generous amount and just sprinkle it all over. So the next step, this is very important, and this is another thing I was doing wrong in the beginning. So I am gonna take this and fold it up almost like an envelope. So I'm gonna grab the far end and fold it up over two thirds of it. And then I'm gonna take this end and fold it up over again. And now you can see it's a pretty thick layer. So I'm gonna sprinkle it with a little bit more flour and I'm gonna go back in with a rolling pin and I'm gonna kind of press and roll it out in, until it's pretty much 14 inches wide. Now you are gonna wanna cut them into pretty much one inch thick lengths. This part is really satisfying to me. Okay, so when it comes to actually folding them or wrapping them, I am gonna grab it between my thumb and my middle finger and then wrap it around my pointer finger and the middle finger again, and then go all the way around again. And then once I reach the middle point here, wrap it up and around, and then tuck it in kind of underneath like this. And then you have yourself a cute little cardamom bun. Yeah, people are so fast at it. I was watching a video of the owners of Fabrique making cardamom buns, and he was doing it so fast. He just like wraps it around like so fast, puts it on the baking sheet and then moves on to the next. But I feel like I really, feel like I have to take my time with them to make it look nice. I feel like it looks so easy when you're doing it. I know, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> do you want to come do one? Come do one. It's so fun. Okay, you ready? And then grab it between yep, yep. Here, yep, here and then wrap it around like that. And then again. And then come to the like, middle point. Oh wait, I don't have much room, hold on. I know, it's hard, you have to kind of like, like stretch it out a long right? way, yeah. This, mm -hmm. this. Yeah, killed it. Honestly, yours like, looks better than mine. You see that? <laughs> First time hey. right here. There are also a lot of other ways you could fold them. I would say this is probably the most traditional way or the way that you'll see most bakeries do them. You could do a little braid. You could also do almost like a twirl and then wrap it around, kind of like a snail, I guess. But I think this is my favorite way. My fingers are definitely getting a little buttery now. So I'm gonna let these proof for about half an hour. They're not gonna double in size. They just haven't been when I've been making them and that's really fine, they turn out great. So I'm just gonna cover them with a clean kitchen towel and I'll be back to put these in the oven in about half an hour. These have sat for about 25 minutes, 30 minutes and you know obviously there's not a huge change but you can kind of tell if you kind of do a little indent. If it stays, which it's 
pretty much saying, then they are ready to go in the oven. I am now gonna go in with the egg wash and this is just egg in a little bit of water. Sometimes, honestly, most of the time when I'm baking buns, I use an egg yolk and cream or an egg yolk and milk. And that kind of adds an extra glossiness, but it also tends to make the bake good a little bit darker. And I don't want these to get too dark because I'm also gonna finish them with a simple syrup and cardamom sugar. So I just want them to be a nice like golden brown color. So I am just doing a simple egg and water. All right, so I preheated the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And the great thing about these is they only have to bake for about 12 minutes until they're nice and golden brown and slightly puffed. And then all that's left to do is do the finishing touches. So we'll see you in 12 minutes. They're done and they smell so good. Some of them look a little bit wonky looking, but that's okay. Sometimes the bottoms, if you don't tuck them in enough, they kind of come undone and they kind of unravel, but they, for the most part, look really good and they smell really good. So the last step is to brush them with simple syrup. And I like to do this because, well, first of all, it's, I feel like it's in a lot of recipes, so it's just what a lot of people do, but it just adds that extra kind of level of sweetness and also makes them extra moist. And brushing them with a simple syrup actually extends their shelf life. I will say though, cardamom buns are definitely best eaten day of. Now I'm gonna use this leftover cardamom sugar and I'm gonna sprinkle the tops just like this, kind of focusing on the center. I have so many amazing memories of having fika, especially with my grandma. Every time we visit her, it'll hit like 3 p.m. and she will bring out a pot of coffee and she'll bring out whatever pastry she either had hidden in her freezer or that she just randomly whipped up or that she went to the bakery to get. And we'll sit outside or around a table and we'll just sit and chat and enjoy a sweet treat and have coffee. And it's such a nice break in the day to kind of sit and relax and kind of connect. Cause I feel like the day just goes by so fast. And that's definitely the main reason I love Fika. And I think that's the reason why the tradition of Fika has kept going for so long. I feel like it's gonna be really hot still. This is so light. I feel, I can just tell it's really fluffy. Oh, that looks so good. Oh my God, it's falling apart, all the layers. I'm definitely taking the inside. So good. It's like a warm hug and a dessert. The cardamom is definitely very fragrant as it should be, and it's the perfect balance of sweetness. And honestly, any pastry that's right out of the oven, I love. Obviously, the best part of Fika is sharing, and I love to bake for people. So I think I'm gonna put it in our Come and Get It channel, which is the best Slack channel ever, and see if people wanna come try some cardamom buns. So what happens during Fika? Do we gossip? Yeah, we do. Okay. We do gossip. <laughs> Sign me up. We do. That's amazing. Thanks. Yeah, if you like these, I'm actually very happy with these ones. They got, they should never really fluffy. They're a little soft in the middle, but like, mm. like a cinnamon roll. Yeah, that was thanks. Soft. So good. You guys have seen the, so thanks. Yeah, you guys have seen the worst. Yeah, the they started out there. as like mm. little nubs, I feel like. Right. Mm. No, this is actually perfect. Mm. Thanks mm. guys. Perfect karma. Mm. I could live for like a week straight off of this. Like, only this. Honestly, I think like if I could choose a pastry, it would be a cardamom bun yeah. mm. to have. Where's the recipe? Tam, that's so funny you ask, because <laughs> if you're at home and you're watching this and you want to make the recipe, you can find it down below in the description. It's linked. Mm -hmm. And if you make these, which I highly recommend you do, uh, please let me know. And I will see you in the next video for What's Rafika. Mm -hmm.